I am going to add at this point, um, Andrew wrote us a really nice letter about the company of the material and it's the end of it. So Mark, yes, you guys remember, it said go in G. So we will expect you to name <laughs> <laughs> That's That's fine. That might be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Um, and, he and better not do it in swimming or he'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I visited a tech ed class last week when I was over there. And, uh, uh, one of the students asked me, I got to talk about Nava 2 wiring the guys in the tech ed class. Which is a lot of one, of the, one of the kids in the class said, tell me, tell me about yourself. And where have you lived and all that. So I kind of went around the country where I've lived. And, and then I said, and now I live in San Juan and I live in Thank you very much. It's been a, a pleasure to serve here, and I appreciate very much all your support. And, and, uh, and the cool to work with everyone. Can we call on you to take notes and uh, make records <laughs> at, at one of our committee meetings? I'll, I'll be there. It's on my computer. <laughs> All right. So with that, uh, could I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Or, or do you want? Do you, do you have something else you want um, to do? I, well, I guess, did you want to recognize that we're going to, our MG21 <coughs> teacher, I mean, he's been here too. Okay. Yep. Um, Jeff Hanson, who is going to be presenting the consent agenda. Yep. Um, and then, do you want to say anything about Judge Fanson? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's not a, you're right, I was looking at the resignations. Thank you very much. Um, Another announcement in the consent agenda, you'll see a contract uh, for our Dane County School to, or School Consortium, which is a school to work program for the directorship, a contract for Josh Fassel, who is our current, uh, a current business ed teacher in the high school. And the reason you don't see a resignation is because we're the fiscal agent, so he essentially is still going to be an employee for the district, so it's technically a transfer. But nonetheless, we'd like to publicly recognize Josh as well uh, for being um, uh, named into, or being hired into that position. That's a consortium of 16 school districts in Dane County, and it's a great opportunity, and we're very proud of Josh as well, and expect great leadership for him in that yeah, position. Well deserved. Yeah. yeah. And Thank and you, Susan, for the reminder. He'll be missed as a teacher in our He certainly will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. another hole. <laughs> but, um, okay, then, uh, we didn't get a motion yet. Do we have a motion Someone. to approve the consent agenda? Second. Second. It's moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, correspondence and announcements. Do you have anything? I have none tonight. Okay. Anybody else? The musical. I was going to say the musical's coming up. Sweet. Next week, the ninth. The ninth is the first night, I think. I have tickets for the ninth. So first night. Anyway, High School Musical, which everybody, if you haven't seen one, for sure, even if you have seen one, I'd highly recommend it. It's always spectacular. Um, then if nobody else has anything, I, Susan? I just want to say, too, um, with the nicer weather, I've been out in the district and walking in the district quite a bit, and I think probably you guys have been, too, but um, I have met so many students in the last two weeks who are out exercising and, I mean, I bet the girls on the track team, um, the new track coach, uh, they floated around basketball. So um, again, these kids have been so polite and so pleasant. I mean, if an adult comes up to you and says, hello, I'm Susan Manning, I'm, I'm on the school board. You know, they are so polite and so nice. And anyway, so I've been really impressed with the students that I'm, I know they're out there, but we don't always get to see them. So it's been a great opportunity just in the last couple of weeks to just reconnect with a lot of the families. I had this similar experience with the local girl, the mum girl, whose mother introduced me. She knew me. She says, she's waiting for the bus the corner. And she introduced me and says, this is Mr. Bowles. He's on the school board. You're the one that caused us to get on start school so early. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've heard that from my own. I'm lucky I wasn't so <laughs> First time. Oh, okay. All right. Um, then on to board reports. Um, last Wednesday, I think, was the WSB Day at the Capitol, and both Dan and I attended that. Um, and if you want to say in the, in the morning, there were presentations from someone from DPI about the budget. There are some uh, budget comments in your administrative content here. 
Um, there is certainly a lot of concern throughout the state um, about both the university and K-12. And actually, interestingly, when I talk to people about it, I think probably more attention seems to be being paid to the university or in the minds of a lot of people. A lot of people aren't really realizing how serious the K-12 situation is. Um, and that, um, be, and maybe because of the way it was presented, it was presented as essentially flat. Um, and th there was an increase touted for the second year, but as we've talked about already here, um, that increase goes to property tax relief. Not one penny of it will come to us in additional aid because the revenue caps are not being lifted at all for either year. Um, and we are also losing $150 this year in categorical aid that was, it's way too complicated to sort of explain right now, but that was above the revenue limit. Um, we're losing that this year. We had counted on, all, all districts generally were counting on receiving that again because that had been the indication that we would receive it again. So that's a blow. And then in the second year of the biennium, we'll get $165 per student, but averaged over the biennium, that amounts to $135 per student loss. So for Monona Grove, it's almost $500,000 loss. Um, I, for most, for a lot of districts that have been reporting in, it's been roughly that to two million to more to several million, depending on the district. So it's clearly there is a major cut in K-12 education, and there's no other way to say it. It is a cut, and there is property tax relief. Um, at the day of the Capitol, we hear the presentation on the budget, and then WSB sets up appointments for us to uh, meet with our legislators. Um, we were all encouraged to contact members of the Joint Finance Committee, which this board already did. We had already sent a resolution. One of their last meetings is tomorrow in Reedsburg, and I, may, I have something in the morning. I may try to go up there, but we've already put input in. And, um, but they were encouraging presence of, they, and they are, they are having a number of school superintendents and school board members have been showing up at these hearings. None of them are in Dane County. Um, so they're hearing this from around the state, but that, you know, one of the issues is the governor apparently has been very firm that he wants to give that average of a $5 per person property tax refund, and it is an average of $5 per person, and maybe as much as 10 for some people um, for the year. And he will not increase taxes. So when I s say to people, because I was hearing from some legislators, there's some thought that they may give us that $150 per student back, but then if, there, if the governor has said, and he has apparently said he will veto any legislation that increases property taxes. So then the question is, well, then where would that money come from? So I don't know how uh, optimistic we can be that we'll get any of that back. I guess I'm not feeling too optimistic, even though I'm hearing from some even Republican legislators that, well, we think we can maybe do something. But again, the challenge will be, okay, well, where, where are you going to get that money if you're not willing to? raise property taxes at all, or at least keep property taxes flat if you're, if you're not willing to cut them. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're insisting you have to cut them as opposed to leave them the way they are, where is that money going to come from? So I don't know if you have anything. Yeah, to and that's what I've heard from some of my colleagues around the state, too, who do have their, their representatives that are, um, you know, on a joint finance, that they, they do understand that this is a cut to schools and the significance. The big question is, well, where's the money going to come from? I think they all want to be able to restore it. The question is, can they? And... So we'll see. I think we're going to find out soon where the Joint Finance Committee stands on this, and, and, um, and hopefully we'll get some relief. Yeah, that's, that's about all. Otherwise, um, I, I think the only other thing that we can do as board members is, and that you guys in the audience can do if you're li listening is, is talk to our neighbors and talk to people when you get the opportunity, because a lot of people really don't understand that. And, uh, school finance is complicated, but I think just making the point that while this was played as an increase and played as flat, it is not flat, it is a cut. Now, the one thing we did try to talk to our legislators, because our three legislators are all, they get it, they're with us on this, they understand, they would like to see um, more attention paid to public schools, and the message I tried to take was, you know, I, I get that you're in the, the minority party, and but we need a champion. We need people talking about this all the time. We need to make the connection between public education and jobs and the economy, that the state will not thrive if K-12 education is allowed to go down the tubes. And that's where it's headed. We, I mean, it's, it is that serious. And we really need to keep making that point. And I think I asked our legislators, whenever you get the chance, just talk about this, make that connection. Because it seems like it should be obvious, but it apparently isn't. So I think that's a job that we all need to take on ourselves as we talk to people. Uh, Jessica. 
Yeah, and Susan, I really, really want to thank you for your strong, you know, sense of advocacy in the community and, and the work that you have done in this regard. It's very admirable to me that your passion, your commitment to it, and I think that you are one of those champions. I thank you. Well, thank you. Right. It's, it's like hitting your head against the wall, but <laughs> but, it's, but it's worth it. But you got to keep doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you gotta, you, well, and that's my point too. I think I think we can't just not say anything because <coughs> then they can come back and say, well, we didn't hear anything from right. people. And so it's important that people speak up on this stuff. So thank you. I appreciate that. And we may know more after the South Carolina primary. Yeah, we might. <laughs> that's a little ways off. That's and that's one of the problems I think that all that you know. We have too many months to wait, <laughs> so they'll want the budget done by then. Okay, um, unfinished business, and the first item is discussion and possible approval of the preliminary 2015-16 certified staffing plan. Okay, I just want to emphasize that this is still a preliminary plan. What we're looking for tonight in approval is really an approval of the concept of that we need to add these six additional teaching positions in order to maintain um, our class sizes within our guidelines and that we will not hire any teachers until we have firm, you know, a more firm budget um, you know, outlook, but at least we can begin the process of, of posting and start to th that. Um, so we can move forward so we're not waiting so late. And so we will, um, as we get budget information, we'll continue to talk about this. Um, we have not, you know, there's no recommendation for any specialist positions. I'm not saying that will come forward, but we're still gonna continue looking at those as well, um, you know, throughout the spring. But these are the ones that are clearly identifiable that with our class sizes, we need these positions to maintain those guidelines. So we are asking for approval tonight of this as, as a preliminary plan. Okay, so could we have a motion to approve the preliminary 2015-16 staffing plan as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded. Uh, comments, Susan? Well, my only question is, and I really, really appreciate us doing this and doing this early and doing this separate from other staffing issues so that we can just focus on the class size and how that's being addressed. Um, and it, I think there's been significant improvement at the high school and the class sizes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in all honesty, when you continue to look at this, if you're a student doing advanced work, col advanced college writing, you're going to be in a great big class. How can you possibly assign a five page paper to 30 kids or, you know, Honors English. There are 31 students in that class. So I guess I'm continuing to see, you know, numbers in particularly in the advanced programming. Um, pre calculus, or maybe it's calculus, 30 kids. I guess my question is. Um, is it 0.4? Mm -hmm. Is that enough? Sure. Great question. And, and I guess there's two things to keep in mind. Number one, these are course requests, not final course okay. enrollments. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things on some of those, those numbers will come down um, as students you know, finalize their schedules. Um, and that's something that um, Dr. Bross does go through with every department those numbers and the, the departments, the teachers with him make their recommendations on how many sections. And so on some of those, we have approximately 30 requests. And so the question is, well, do we have two sections of only 15 versus is that, are we better served having an additional section of, of another class? And so all those recommendations, uh, the teachers or the department coordinators in working with their colleagues are on board and making these recommendations. And so there is not a restriction given to the high school saying you can only have a 0.4 FTE. If there's needed an additional section in any of these departments to go to 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7, I would bring that forward to the board. They're certainly trying to be prudent and not have you know, more than necessary, but this is based on the recommendation from the teachers themselves in those departments of what they think they need to, to efficiently you know, uh, manage those courses. So. And can you continue to, since it is so preliminary, just continue to monitor that? Because mm -hmm. really, if you look at the classes where the numbers are high, and the fact that we don't, to the best of my understanding, we don't have a dedicated, gifted, and talented um, programming person 
specifically addressing the that at the high school. Um, I just want to make sure we're looking at sure. That. Okay, Jessica, anything? Dean, anything? Uh, question I had when I when I looked through this, the format of this preliminary plan is a little different than the one we had last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And uh, the one you had last year had uh, had more than just the class sizes. It had yep. it had toses and it right. had uh, deans and that's the deans of students and that sort of thing. Uh, is that still in process, or is it, or is it assumed that it's no change, or yeah. or both of those, or what? Yeah, great question. Um, for this year, given our current budget scenario, it would be no change in those other positions. That this would be it. We felt last year was an opportunity to really. Um, in some respects, bring back some positions to lower class size. Others, as you know, were some new positions to provide support in, in needed areas. And so for this year, we feel comfortable right now with kind of a status quo in those other areas, given that we think it's gonna be a really lean budget. Um, and so this would be it. As I said, if we get positive budget information, we certainly will continue to re-examine those, but there's no nothing major like last year. That was kind of a one time to, okay, let's, uh, do some rearranging here and, and uh, shore up some positions that we felt were necessary. Uh, from a little another different angle than, than Susan had, um, I think class size is also a function of, of the, uh, the type of courses you're teaching mm -hmm. in terms of teaching stations and science and so forth. But it also, it also would have to do with uh, uh, the number of children who may have unusual management situations. Because if you end up with with uh, increasing class sizes, the greater opportunity that you have for two or three or four of those children in the class, and uh, if you have mo more than one that has an uh, unusual need for mm -hmm. supervision, or to put it nicely, uh, that uh, uh, there aren't that, that usually then removes the teacher entirely from. <coughs> a lot of minutes in the classroom to manage those situations and uh, do you look at those at all in terms of uh, uh, the frequency of that you may not know that until, mm -hmm. until uh, later on when it's there but it would seem to me that uh, along with the gifted and talented and that that sort of thing that 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 we need to have some kind of reserve budget for for some of those particularly in an particularly in uh, elementary school mm -hmm. where, where uh, uh, there's a, a principal and a TOSA, and I'm interested in not having a TOSA be, a, uh, be an assistant principal to, mm -hmm. or to handle that. Uh, and so there needs to be some kind of flexibility maybe in our budget to uh, be able to relieve some of those situations. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether you have it where it's an educational assistant or, uh, you know, some other kind of personnel that can, that can that can be an assistant to that besides the superintendent and the classroom teacher that already has 25 or 26. In mm -hmm. it. I, I think you see where to, I'm you answer your question generally, and you're right, and particularly if you have a, a small elementary school that only has, say, three sections in a particular grade, well then. Is, is not as much flexibility. When you have a school that has five, six, seven sections, the principals work closely with the teachers on how those students are assigned, you know, and, and they take a great deal of thought in that as, as far as to make sure that those are, are manageable and so on. So it's a little bit more challenging when you don't have that many sections. But um, so I think in general, yes, that is taken into account. Yes, we look at the guidelines, but I also, you know, when we meet with the principals and we take a look at those numbers, you know, a lot of it, yeah, they do know the makeup of that class. And, and so we are, we are constrained with budget. You know, I, I think if we had more funds available, might we have more sections in some of those grades? I, I think the answer is probably clearly yes. You know, we'd love to have even smaller class sizes and that would allow for that. So do we have a contingency? Well, no, we don't. The budget's that tight, but I think, um, I, I'm confident in the recommendation on the number of sections that it's a manageable number um, and that we can, you know, educate the children there and provide the, you know, we have lots of ways of providing supports. Yeah, um, I was going a different direction from 
simply adding sections. But, okay. But to having some kind gotcha. of uh, assistance that uh, that can be pupil management or you know kind of flexible across the various ranges. I I uh, I know that uh, you know experience I've had in watching classrooms like that. You know, in my you know when my granddaughter and other things are in mm -hmm. school. Is I remember one at Elvium School where, where uh, uh, you know, my granddaughter says she's out of the room a lot, and and, uh, and uh, you know we don't get a lot of teaching done, and, uh, and so uh, so I she says well, why don't you come in and watch? So I got in there and I watched his grandpa, you know, sitting in the back of the room, and that and that teacher had a class of about 28. But she had uh, she had uh, one student with uh, medication, periodic medication issues. You had another one that was clearly a behavioral uh, issue, and uh, another one that had physical constraints. And uh, and if you had anybody else misbehaving or anything like that, uh, that combination of things, on my my notice, I after my third time observing, I, I noticed that that uh, about every hour, they were losing about eight minutes uh, for teacher distraction for the second or the third student mm -hmm. that was in that <coughs> class. And if class sizes were smaller, you would reduce that frequency. And if you had, once the principal comes down and does it, that one's out of play. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you have a lot of those in the yeah. building. I, I, you see what I'm driving sure. at? Sure. And I guess what I'd say in, in general terms, our focus is not to have staff to remove those children, is to work with them so that we don't have that, you know, those distractions in the classroom. And, and, you know, there's... Well, they do work with them, but that also distracts from 27 other kids often in the classroom, too. Well, I think it's a much more complex answer than that. About, but the idea is that, yes, it is our responsibility to have the support that every child, you know, um, has... There aren't those distractions, and that we can, you know, have, um, you know, teaching and learning going on that entire time. And and yeah, there there's certainly some that um, everything will go well. <laughs> it, it, it's not. Yeah, there's a lot more to it, you know, about how you handle that. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we do still have some special ed aids. Oh, sure, we do. We have. I mean, there are different situations. I think there's some flexibility there. Some of what you're talking about. Um, there's thought given into how the kids are placed in classes and I mean and there's always more we could do but yeah I, I think I think that people do pay attention to that Susan. Yeah. and then well again I appreciate um, that we have been able to have a discussion about other factors other than just the class size because when you look at the numbers it looks like that's what you look at and mm -hmm. that's kind of something that we can really see and then respond to and again in the past, there's a very strong history in the school district of looking at a variety of factors, and that's why it's helpful to know that the teachers are making that recommendation mm -hmm. as well. Um, in the past, uh, there was kind of a sequence that we followed, and it would be adding an assistant or assistance help to that classroom, either through a special ed teacher being involved in, in the appropriate classroom or an educational assistant, but there was kind of a sequence of things we followed, and actually, we split a class. Um, into groups of 16 because of other identified factors in that class and it wasn't a size issue. So we have a, we have a history of doing that and, and I think that's been very beneficial to the kids in the district. Um, the other thing, kind of off that piece, um, we did some shifting of staff kind of into administration in terms of literacy, um, a literacy coordinator or a, a, so is that going to be a permanent position, or um, do you, I, I'm just sure. saying, why don't you just at some point in time come back to us and just update us on what your plan for that is? Mm -hmm. I guess that every is. position, anytime is a new position, and that's what last year's staffing plan, there were a number of, of new positions or redefined positions. Certainly any time with that, it would not just be a number. There would be a report as to the rationale and, and so on You know, for that. Um, and so, to once they're th they are all permanent until we would recommend a change. I'm talking. This was a transfer. They, well, the interventionists and the um, 
But yeah, I think I think what you're asking would need to be taken up at a different time. I just say, yeah, right, right, just, right. It, it needs to be taken up at a different sometimes time. Sometimes it's as simple as needing to shift staff from building and correct. Just because that comes back to us, it's it's helpful to know about okay. that. And sometimes they end up, you right. know, maybe working for you. You know, I I thought at one point we had said we'd like to because there were the reading the literacy model was pretty different this year mm -hmm. with the oh, interventionists. That's I, that's, that's what that's I thought. Right. Where I thought you were going. Because I think I, I think we might like to hear sure. how that's gone, and, and I'm a kind of assuming we will when we get you know reports on mm -hmm. the academics, the, the improvements or the not yeah. lack of improvement or whatever. Because because we did that model hoping we would be delivering services better. So sure. I, so I think that's what we were thinking we might get in the future. But yeah. um, Jessica, yeah, no I kind of ran into the same place too. So okay. I'm got glad it. You got I misunderstood. Well. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you anything else? Oh. Okay. Anybody, anything else on this? We did have a motion and a second, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so if there are no further comments um, all, uh, on the motion to approve the preliminary 2015-16 staffing plan as presented, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next um, is discussion on possible approval of a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of approximately $9,995,000 general obligation promissory notes series. 2015A and uh, I'll turn it right over to Jared. Jared. Okay. Um, so today we actually did some refinancing. So this will be our fifth refinancing in the last uh, five years. Um, we had originally talked about how we had thought we would save about uh, $560,000. Well, it was an excellent day of bidding because we actually are seeing savings of $666,000. Wow. So now this is all out of fund 39, so it's tax. Uh, property tax relief it doesn't directly benefit the budget, but it does show that we are doing our due diligence. Our so the winning bidder today was Robert Baird Company, and uh, we're going from a 4.25 percent interest rate down to a 1.04 percent. Down to a what? 1.04. <laughs> so um, I call that on you on refinance? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's pretty good. So based on all that and today's savings, we have um, saved over the last five years um, two. $9 million dollars in um, interest. Nice. So, so this resolution is just authorizing us to continue with that. So yeah. that's it. All right. That sounds good. So she only comes for the ask. She doesn't yeah. For the thing. Um, and She's not so tonight. So Dean, <laughs> Dean, were you going to going to make a resolution or make a motion? No, I just want to ask: second. is 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 that saving? Is that already been anticipated in our budget plan? So this savings is actually just pop property tax relief because it's in fund 39, so it's outside of our all tax, all property tax relief. Yeah, again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But okay. so. Good. wish it was in fund 10. <laughs> <laughs> so could we have a motion for approval of the resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of nine million nine hundred ninety-five thousand general obligation promissory notes series 2015A as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Again. So moved and seconded. Any further comments, Susan? Uh, Jessica? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, and then we have discussion and possible approval of a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of approximately $2,060,000 um, general obligation refunding of bond series 2015B. Similar. Um, so, um, the best for the meeting, we approved the, the bar for our, post, our, our retirement benefits. And since it was retirement benefits, state statute requires us to only issue short term notes. Um, and then we have the opportunity to refinance. So, this resolution allows us to refinance to have that over a 20 year period to meet what we had originally talked about. So, it's just a procedural. So could I have a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of $2,060,000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds, series 2015B as presented? Okay, it's moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any comments, Susan? Um, I, I would just say that as a member of the, um, the committee that worked on this, um, Dean and Susan were there too, and we spent a, a year really coming to This being um, the retirement. Right. Figuring out how to fund it and how to try and <coughs> do it in a very collaborative, fair way. And this board, this entire board, has been incredibly supportive of 
Every time we, we just kept going back, we went back to the table. I can't tell you how many times trying to make it there. Um, so and this represents Just a question in general to ask. Has the trust committee been formed? I, I understand that the, uh, that the uh, lawyer mm -hmm. put together uh, an initial proposal from which you would get a uh, uh, request for proposal type of thing has done his work. Mm -hmm. But what is the general status of, of all of that, the mix of the, the trust committee, I understand, is the one that would be uh, permanent? Uh, mm -hmm. as, as an instrument of our fiduciary responsibility right. to this retirement fund? Yep. Where yep. That will not be appointed until after the board approves the documents. And so we have the draft documents from the attorney. We're really close. We just have a couple things to clean up with him. And so I would expect uh, that next month. The attorney? You're right. And I would expect to bring those documents forward to the board for approval. Once the board approves it, in the, those documents are the process for appointing that um, investment committee, and then at that point we would go ahead and assign people. So, so that, uh, for want of a better term, that legal document, legal opinion, uh, will encompass the fiduciary committee, the uh, the education policy, the investment policy, and the fee disclosure policy. Um, somewhat. It, what we'll do is, it, it, one entire document is about the role of that investment committee. And one of the first jobs of that investment committee is to create the policy for how we invest funds and so on. So to answer your question, yes, all those things will be addressed. Not all of them in these initial documents, but the procedure for how those things get done are all addressed in this document. Will the attorney be uh, the initial writer of, of each of those three documents down the pipe? Or? Um, no, there are some suggestions about how we would go about that. And, okay. uh, and that we'll talk about when these come to the board, certainly. I, you know, the expertise of a, of a citizen committee like that is, uh, doesn't always have those kind of skills in it, particularly in small. Right. Well, we, the committee went right on themselves. They would have an right. expert right. write them, obviously. Okay. Right. Yeah. Have yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I have to put information to the committee of the whole in April. Um, we would have probably brought it tonight, but we wanted to follow the process of having it. Um, We're getting a little bit off topic here. I think we, I think, yeah. I mean, I'll ask that I'll question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so maybe we'll just bring the agenda. Well, I think when they're ready to bring it forward, that would be the time to discuss all of this, really. Yeah. Um, It'll be on the next board yeah, agenda. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what we just heard. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it has been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution um, as described. Any other comments? Just seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there is none. Future agenda items. Uh, that will be one. <laughs> um, the mm -hmm. stuff you just talked about will be one. Um, future meeting dates. We have on April 7, the election night, we have a long range facilities planning committee. No, I just lost my screen there. Okay. Um, and I'm just checking to see if these dates, yeah, the dates have been updated. So we policy committee on April 8. And I did send this out to board members as a, a reminder that our we normally meet the second and fourth Wednesdays, but because April has five Wednesdays and the spring break comes in there, our committee of the whole meeting of the board will be April 15, and the actual meeting of the board will be that last Wednesday in April, which is my night. So just so people make note of that. Yeah. I, just related to one of those committees, uh, the Teacher Compensation Committee meets next on April 14th. I did send out um, an email this afternoon, and I copied the board on the informational meetings for all teachers uh, prior to that, and so we're going to go consecutively every evening after spring break um, and into the next week, so we'll hit all five buildings. Um, I, it was pointed out to me uh, today that um, the idea was that a teacher could attend any of those meetings that they happen to have a conflict the night it was in their buildings, and I might have to make some adjustments on a couple of the times to allow you know access to those. So I'll 
to discuss that with our administrative team about making the adjustment at those times. But, uh, but anyway, the dates have been sent to you late this afternoon in an email. So, okay, so we have the dates and times in the release. So Correct. Yeah, to absolutely. All, any board member would be welcome. But, yeah. And then if you do change the times, obviously, it'll I'll send out. Uh, yeah. 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 And then if anything, it'd be later, not earlier. Correct. So that's Correct. helpful. Uh, nope, they're scheduled. The health care benefits is scheduled for 90 minutes, and so we'll immediately. Okay, we yeah. stick to Because I yeah. just knew that some of the teachers would my walk Yep, yep. So the, okay. we'll stick to the strict timelines on that. Okay. All right. There is no further business. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, we are adjourned.